Oh, take number nine. This has been the most difficult video for me to make ever. So let me just get straight into it, all right? I'm going to give you a little bit of information about me to put this video into context, okay? Um, most of you already know that I'm a former history teacher. I retired many, you know, some years back. Um, I'm on the course of establishing a new career. But in my daily life, my spiritual practice, I follow the Lukumi Ifa tradition that developed in Cuba from the Yoruba people who came over from Nigeria. Um, until recently, I've not had the time to really devote to learning more about the tradition because this is a tradition where you have to be actively involved to learn, all right? Um, you can get some things from books, but to really know you have to be involved, and I wasn't able to do that. So I've been doing all that I can, trying to learn what I can, you know? Um, I ask my godparents questions when I'm around them, when I get the opportunity to be with them. And what, you know, books they recommend to me, I've read, I've got information there. And then I try to find other sources and, you know, I run it by them first to make sure that what I'm getting, the information that I'm getting is accurate. So, yes, I'm always on the lookout on YouTube trying to find information. And I've got, you know, several videos that have, you know, some really good fundamental information. And if you look at my playlist, you can see that there I have, you know, one playlist dedicated specifically to Yoruba spirituality. So... I'm getting ready this morning and I'm watching YouTube and I see this video come up in my, you know, recommended and it's dealing with African spirituality. And so, yes, I'm, a, I'm interested, of course, you know. To make a long story short, it's made by this young lady and the focus of her video is the aspects of African spiritual practices that survive in the African-American community, the black church, right? Now, because I've, I'm in this tradition and because in my culture, I've grown up with African-influenced spiritual practices, I recognize these elements, right? Um, for example, talking about going down by the riverside, laying your burdens down by the river, you know, I recognize these as being retentions from Africa, right? But what threw me off with this video is she was quoting this old book written by some guy. I don't even remember his name or the title of the book, to be honest with you. And all of the aspects of the African traditions that we have, you know, or that survive in African American culture. This man says, and this goes directly back to ancient Egypt. And this pisses me off to no end. You know, I've been I've been noticing a trend lately of people who are just so ignorant on the one hand. Of African of of African histories and cultures, ignorance of their own history, and this strange cultish obsession with ancient Egypt. It's like it's like it's a religion. Ancient Egypt is a religion, and the ancient Egyptians are these people's gods. And now, I know that, yeah, I'm the same guy that made eight videos dealing with ancient Egypt, but it just it's just by coincidence that Egypt is the part of Africa, the one country in Africa that I've had the most access to, okay? And I'm more most familiar with. 
But Egypt is not the be all and end all when it comes Egypt is not the be all and end all when it comes to anything dealing with Africa. All right? Now, don't get me wrong, I think it is important to recognize Egypt as um, a native African civilization created by African people because it directly dispels the myth of white supremacy. So, for me, that's its that's the significance, the main significance of this issue of whether or not it was African. And I don't get into all the, the, the sidetrack discussions about modern Egyptians and whether modern Egyptians look like ancient Egyptians and whether they really are the descendants of ancient Egyptians. Yes, they are. And I know people out there don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't want to hear that. Too bad. It's the truth. Moving right along. Let me put it to you this way. <clears throat> you go to Egypt and you look at the people as a whole. You're not going to see people that look like Europeans. You're going to see people who look like biracial people or multi-generational mixed people or what we would consider to be black people. All right? That's the range that you have in Egypt, predominantly, okay? Depending on where you are in the country. If you're in the South, you're going to see people who look more like what you would, would expect Africans, you know, stereotypical dark skin to look like. If you're in the North, you're going to see more people who look biracial, multi-generational mixed, okay? So, from the perspective of white supremacy, let's just say. What is the opinion of the white supremacist when it comes to the position of biracial people, mixed people? We already know that they think Africans are just like subhuman, right? We already know that. That's a given. Because they created this this paradigm that said that dark skin is directly correlated to a lack of intelligence, meaning the darker your skin is, the less intelligent you are, right? And that Africans never contributed to history, never created any civilizations, right? But then they take, took it even further than that and said to even have offspring with an African results in children who are intellectually defective, right? So then, don't that put all of us all in the same box? We're a bunch of fucking retards, right? We're so dumb we don't even know how to tie our fucking shoes, right? How did the white supremacist establishment in South Africa in the United States treat all of these people, biracial, multiracial, African, get to the back of the bus. You can't drink at this water fountain. You can't eat at this restaurant. You can't go to this school. You can't live in this neighborhood. You can't go to this hospital. Didn't they do the same thing to all of us? Right? Because we were subhuman, right? That is what happened, right? I'm not, I'm not dreaming this shit up, right? That is history, right? So then you explain to me, if we're supposed to be so fucked, right? And we are intellectually inferior, incapable. How then do you explain that in the northeast corner of Africa is this civilization that was 3,000 years old, much older than anything that was ever in Europe, and all the statuary and all the paintings that you see depict people who look like Africans, like multi-generational mixed people, like biracial people, stereotypically, right? So 
So what does that do to your theory? It busts your bullshit and blows it right out of the water because it shows that what you're talking is just smack. Because these people who made the civilization, I don't give a damn what you want to call them. Call them whatever you want to call them. They didn't look like you. And what you said is that people that looked like that were inferior. Well, bullshit. And there's the proof. So, for me, I don't need to get into none of these other side discussions. That's just a damn waste of time, okay? And energy. You said we were all stupid. Well, this proves that you're a liar. But now having said that, Egypt is not the be-all and end-all of African civilization or history, okay? It was not the mother of civilization in Africa. I'm going to say it again. Egypt was not the mother of civilization in Africa. It wasn't the first. And for all the Coptic cuckoos out there that want to come and talk smack to me, this ain't some wild Afrocentric bullshit that I'm talking. If you look in... Mainstream history written by European scholars, they themselves will tell you that Nubia is older than ancient Egypt, and a lot of the traditions that were ancient Egypt was founded on originated in Nubia. That's what them white folks is saying, okay? Not me. But here's the kick. Nubia was not the first. It's not the mother. Modern science tells us that humanity, modern humans, originated in the Rift Valley somewhere in that region in East Africa. And from there, they migrated to the other parts of Africa. Some migrated to Southern Africa. Some migrated to West Africa. Some migrated up the Nile into the Sahara when it was green and then into the Nile Valley when it started to dry up. Don't you think these people had culture? Don't you think they had philosophy? Don't you think they had spirituality? Of course they did. So when you see elements all over Africa that are similar to what you see in Egypt, it's not because Egyptians brought it to Africa, to the rest of Africa. It's because they're all coming from the same root. And I've been over this discussion countless of times. Oh, well, you know, when the Greeks and the Romans came into Egypt, the real Egyptians, they ran away to West Africa. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. And I'm going to tell you why that statement offends me as a person of African descent. Number one, historically speaking, there are no artifacts to back up that claim. Number two, there's no historical documentation to back up that claim. Number three, there's no DNA, genetic evidence to back up that claim. This tradition that I practice... Yeah, I've seen people talking about, oh, well, you know, the Yoruba, they originated in Kemet. What do they actually have to say about their origins? They say that they originated, they say the world originated at Ileife in Nigeria, not Kemet. That's what they're saying. All right? So that goes to show that their worldview, in their worldview, the land that they stand on is the center of the universe and is sacred. So if you want to be Afrocentric, well, they're Yoruba-centric. They are at the center of their universe, not Kemet. All right? For you to say that 
what are you trying to tell me? You're trying to tell me that all the rest of Africa was unpopulated before refugees from Egypt showed up? I know you're not trying to tell me that. So common sense says that there were already people in the rest of Africa, right? So then what are you trying to say? You're trying to tell me that in all the other areas of Africa, these people were just sitting there so damn fucking stupid, they couldn't figure out how to do anything until Egyptians showed up and brought them knowledge? Now we got a problem. We got a real problem because that sounds to me like some more colonial white supremacist bullshit. All you're doing is you're changing the characters. So they tried to say anywhere in Africa where they found civilization, they said it had to be some white man that brought this shit there. And you, you just changing the colonizer. Instead of making it the white man, you made it the Egyptian. Because everybody that was there, they must have been like, you know, booty scratchers, right? Didn't know what the fuck to do. They was, I don't know, swinging from trees, eating bananas and shit. Until Egyptians came and civilized them. I got a problem with that shit. You know, whenever people take the time to actually look in West Africa, they find all kinds of shit that forces them to change their opinion on the course of human history. Recently, by accident, they found remnants of pottery technology in Mali, in West Africa. That was the oldest example of pottery technology in Africa. Okay? Not Kemet. Mali, West Africa. Not only was it the oldest example of pottery technology in Africa, it was some of the oldest pottery technology found in the entire world. There were only two other places where they found pottery that was older. Okay? We're talking 11,000 plus years. That's what was happening in West Africa. When Egypt was in its heyday at the same time in the Niger River Valley region, they had urban, okay, not little grass huts, urban centers of civilization, central government, with cities that were twice the size of medieval London. These were societies that were contemporary with Kemet, with Mesopotamia, with Greece and Rome and all of them. It was there. These were cities that were made out of mud brick, just like the Egyptians did, and stone. They don't have the big monumental structures that Egypt did, but they had urban societies, high, cities that were bigger than any of the cities in Kemet. But you don't know any of that because you spend all your time just focusing on this one area to the point where you just completely ignore everything else. And I have a problem with that. I'm not saying to not have respect for Kemet. I'm not saying that we can't be inspired by Kemet. But some of y'all have taken this shit to the point where you've made it a religion. It's like you've made it some kind of a cult. And that is... Really, y'all will spend, before you get... Before you all even try to learn about your own ancestral lineage, your own line... You will spend hours and weeks and months and days and years arguing with Egyptians about what they look like. Really? Who gives up? 
I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know, it just, it just makes me, it just infuriates me, the level of ignorance that I see. Because you are assuming that you have nothing where your people came from. And I've spoken to people, you know, who practice kemetic science. And when they tell me, well, Kemet is the original, so I'd much rather go there to that instead of, you know, this other stuff in West Africa because that's just a copy of what they had. Listen, let me tell you something. Let's be perfectly honest here. You don't know what the hell they had in Kemet, okay? You want to know why? Because that line has been severed. It's cut. It's extinct. When the Roman Empire decided to make Christianity the official religion of the empire, they closed all the temples, they killed all the priests, and anyone that was around that hadn't converted to Christianity already were forced to convert to Christianity. So all those spiritual traditions, all the hymns, all the prayers, all of that has been forgotten. All the songs, all of that has been forgotten. Even though we've got them written down, some of them, we don't know what that music sounded like. We don't know what those songs sounded like. We don't know what those melodies were like. We don't know how they sang those hymns. But you see this right here? This is alive. This ain't never went extinct. Even when they took our people captive as slaves and penalized them under penalty of death to get them to try to stop their tradition, this never died. They hung on to this. This right here is real. This ain't jewelry, okay? This right here, that ain't jewelry. Okay? That's why we can go and when we're doing our ceremonies on the beach, Yoruba people passing by, they recognize what's going on. And they're shocked. Who are you people? Where are you from? How did you learn all of this? Why? Because they recognize the ceremonies that we're conducting. They recognize the songs. They recognize the language. It's real. It's alive. It's here. It's dynamic. We don't have to pretend or imagine or make up shit. We have a philosophy and traditions that are alive and vibrant and growing stronger. And now that the modern age is here, we're able to travel back to Africa to learn what didn't come across, and we are building our knowledge. It's still there, it's still alive. And all throughout the diaspora, there are aspects of African traditions that survive. I wouldn't be here right now making this video if it wasn't for the fact that a lot of what our ancestors had in Africa survives. When my mother was a young girl, she was dying. She got sick. She was sick for three years, and she was slowly dying. They took her to all the hospitals that they could. They took her to all the different doctors that they could, and nobody could help her. They took her to every church that they could. Every minister, every priest, everyone that they could think of to pray for her, nothing helped. She actually died and had to be revived. And it was only at that point that my great-grandmother, good, strong Pentecostal woman that she was, broke down and took my mother to the traditional healer. And they came with the drums. They had to make a parade from where they were all the way to the house, beating them drums. And they came. They came to the yard, to the, to the yard, 
of the house and they did their ceremonies and they beat those drums and they did their prayers and their chants and they brought the medicinal herbs and they gave them that stuff to my mother to drink, to purge her body, to clean it out. And for the first time in three years, my mother got up and she walked. That's real. That's power. That's something alive. And that's why I'm alive today. That's why I'm here. So how do you expect me to take this shit seriously? To think that what my people had is somehow second rate to ancient Egyptians because we don't have fancy tomb paintings and we just because we don't have fancy paintings and big stone buildings you, you think that I'm supposed to look at us as like we're less than I don't think so there's a lot of things that our ancestors had that surpassed the knowledge that they had in Kemet for one thing, they sure as hell didn't have the herbal knowledge that we have. Why? Because it wasn't in their environment. They didn't have the plants. They didn't have the trees. They didn't have the forest to get those medicinal herbs and medicines that we have. Our ancestors were practicing caesarean section where both the mother and the child lived. Nobody in the entire world, until the advent of modern Western medicine with anesthesia and all of that, in the 20th century, nobody else was doing that. We were doing it for thousands of years. We knew the use of anesthet of antiseptic we understood the need to sterilize that's what we had there's a lot of things that we had but you don't know about it because you think just because we didn't have this material stuff we didn't have anything of value it's not the buildings the power doesn't lie in buildings and structures. The power lies within you. In here and in here. That's where the power is. So stop thinking that you're second best to somebody else because you're not. Yes, Egypt has wonderful monuments. I love all of them. I've been to all of them. You know what else Egypt has? Slums. Around all of those monuments, you're going to find ghettos, including the pyramids. Right up next to the base of the pyramids is a ratchet ghetto. So if those stones have any power, you tell me, how come some of that power can't roll down the damn hill into their backyard and help them out? Why are they living so ratchet? But you all will flock there to the pyramids, om, oh, om, oh, like this shit has some power. They ain't got no damn power. They're impressive. They're an expression of human intelligence, yes, but they have no power. They're just stone. What has power? Living, breathing people do. And the knowledge that they have. Our ancestors left us a lot that still survives. So I don't want to hear this bullshit about we ain't got no history. We ain't got, especially African Americans, it fucking kills me when I hear an African American come with this bullshit. We ain't got no culture. We ain't got no history. We ain't got that. I don't want to bullshit. What the fuck you mean you ain't got no culture? Yes, you do. Everybody has a damn culture. What do you mean? 
We ain't got nothing from Africa. What the hell do you mean? Yes, you do. But you have deliberately decided to turn your back on it and ignore it. And that's why, to this day, it is sitting there and it is dying out. Because you turn your back on it. Not because it's not there. You would rather forget your ancestors, completely ignore them, to go worship Pharaoh. That don't make no kind of damn sense. Looking at all of this from a spiritual perspective, from an African spiritual perspective, next to God, your ancestors, the ancestors of your direct bloodline, are the most sacred. Okay? King Tut ain't doing shit for you spiritually. King Tut ain't doing a damn thing for you in the other world, okay? Your ancestors are. Your ancestors are the ones that are standing by your side. Your grandmother, your great-grandmother, your great-grandfathers, your ancestors, those that were enslaved, those are the ones that are standing beside you, holding you up, giving you the strength to survive this bullshit that we're going through. That's who's standing up for you on the other side. How can you ignore them? You know what this shit is like? Imagine, okay, you want to know what this is like? Let's take Mother's Day. How would that play out if on Mother's Day, instead of buying your mother a card or a bouquet of flowers or something, you go run to give a card and flowers to your mother's cousin. Oh, well, you know, we're the same family. How would that shit play out? Because your mother's cousin, she's famous, she's been on TV, she's been in movies, everybody knows her, yada, yada, yada. She's a celebrity. So you go, instead of buying your mother a card for Mother's Day, you go and you give that to your mother's cousin. You don't go visit your mother none. You go in your mother's cousin's house every fucking Sunday, every weekend. How would that play out? You don't have no time for your mother, but you got time for Auntie Dinah. Auntie Dinah, Auntie Dinah, Auntie Dinah, Auntie Dinah, Auntie Dinah. Auntie Dinah is so fabulous. Auntie Dinah did this. Auntie Dinah did that. Auntie Dinah did the other. But you ain't got nothing to say about your mother. You don't honor your own mother, your own blood. How would that play out? So, you know, especially in this time now, in this period, where we see that there is such an assault physically, emotionally, and spiritually on people of African descent. It's time to stop the bullshit and to honor ourselves and stop looking at ourselves like we're second best, like we're damaged goods. You are not damaged goods. You're not second rate or second best to anybody. If you want to have a real connection, a real spiritual connection, and look, I don't want to hear this shit about, well, you know, Christianity came from Kemet. Well, you know, the real Jews is black. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. Now, look, if you are a Christian, if you are a Muslim, if you are a Jew, and that's your spiritual path, more power to you. I ain't got any right to criticize you or to judge that. But what I am saying is this. Traditional African philosophies are completely different than any of that stuff from the Abrahamic traditions, okay? It's just not the same. It's a completely different world view. 
So if that's the path you choose to follow, you know what? So be it. Follow that path. But don't try to call this African when it's not because it is completely different in its outlook. If you want something that is authentic, then you know what you do? Call on your ancestors and ask them for guidance. Tell them where you are, that you are searching and you are looking and you want them to lead you to a path that is the best for you. Let them guide you, because that's what I did. When I decided that I wanted to come back to this tradition, it wasn't an easy road, because truth be told, there's some people out there that's crazy, batshit crazy. And I had a talk with my father, I said, look, I ain't looking for nothing no more, because these damn people, I keep coming across these damn people, and they freaking crazy as hell. So if this is the path that I'm supposed to travel, you need to bring me some people that are of good character and who are sane. They heard it and they brought me to where I am now. And you know what? My life has never been better. My life is so much better now than what it was before. And it is getting even better. But I made that call from here in true sincerity. So that's why I get offended when I see bullshit trying to be passed off as African spirituality because there's no need for it. And I get pissed off when I see bullshit being trying to pass off as African history because there's no need for it. There is enough real histories out there. There is enough real cultures out there. There are enough real spiritual traditions out there that we do not need to make up bullshit. So instead of focusing your time on this one little aspect and your fantasy of what you think it was, why don't you do some real research and find out what the reality was or is and then follow that. So that's all I got to say on this topic. Look, you all be good, you all be healthy, and look, I ain't about entertaining no bullshit down in my comment section, okay? So you all just, just know that right now, okay? All right, if you come down to my comment section with any kind of bullshit, I don't wanna fucking hear it. You have the freedom of speech to say what you wanna say, but I have the freedom to delete and block your ass if you're going to come, okay? If you want to have a discussion, a respectful discussion, that's fine. But all the other yang-yang, I ain't got no time for that bullshit. So, this is me, Truth Teacher. Love you. Peace.